Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to use your cell phone as a camera in OBS on Linux. We're gonna be using a piece of software called DroidCam. It's available for just about every Linux distro. It's very easy to install on an Arch-based distro using the AUR, and it's relatively easy on a Debian or Ubuntu-based distro as well. Uh, this works for both iOS and Android. In fact, I'm recording this on a iPhone 12, but this works just as well on your Android phone as well. Now there are a few different types of uh, the Droid Cam. There's one type that you can use in any application. You can use it like a webcam on your system. But what I'm focusing on today is the OBS version of it, which integrates in OBS. If there's enough interest, I can happy to do a video on the other one as well. You can use that in things like Teams and Skype and all that kind of stuff. But today we're just focusing on the OBS one. All right, so there's two parts to installing this. There's the desktop part, which is really the client, and then there's the server that runs on your cell phone. Now it gets a little bit confusing. Um, on iOS, there's just one in the App Store. You download that, and depending on if you pay for the full version or not, it unlocks features. Now I definitely recommend that you pay for the full feature, whether you're on iOS or Android. Uh, one big reason is that you get full HD support with no uh, watermarking, otherwise it's locked at 640 by 480. Now, like I said, on iOS, there's just one app. On Android, it's confusing because there's DroidCam, there's DroidCam X, and there's DroidCam OBS. DroidCam is the 640 by 480 version. DroidCam X gives you HD, and then DroidCam OBS is the one that we're gonna use that integrates really well with OBS. So if you're on Android and you want to do the same setup that I'm gonna show you here, make sure you get that DroidCam OBS version. I mentioned about paying for the full version and one benefit is that you get the HD resolution, but another thing that's really, really cool is you get a remote control utility that you connect to just by going to a website. So I'm gonna to switch to a split screen here and then drag this over. I have myself on the side there just so you can see what the changes here do. This is just a Firefox window that I use to connect to my phone on the port that the software is running on. And it gives you all this these options for controlling your Droid Cam software. You can switch the camera. So right now I'm using the, the rear camera, but I can switch to the front camera. And then now you can see out my window there that I'm looking at. Switch back, uh, we can switch, change the uh, white balance. We can turn the flash on and off. Um, we can change the autofocus. If you hover over any of these, it tells you what they do. So we have exposure lock and the exposure value. We can change the zoom. So I can go ahead and zoom in here and then zoom back out to where I was. Um, we can also just uh, you know stop the, the software from here. And then obviously that's just a full screen, but that gives you some remote control without having to kind of reach back behind this. I have it mounted up behind my monitors and I can just control everything from here. So that is a really nice feature having this remote control. Um, so now let's get into this setup. I'm gonna walk you through how to do it on a on Manjaro. It's an Arch-based distribution. It's a little bit different on Debian or Ubuntu, but if you want me to do a video on that, I'm happy to do it. So let's jump over to my laptop and start this install. All right, so here we are on my laptop where I don't have anything set up. Now on the machine that I'm recording on, I have an iPhone set up. So on this side, we're gonna set it up for Android. Um, doing it on the desktop is exactly the same. There's absolutely no difference there. The only difference is on the, your device itself. So because I'm on Manjaro, I'm gonna go out to add remove software. And then you wanna make sure that if you go into preferences, type your password in and make sure that you have AUR turned on because that's where we're gonna get it from. So let's just go and type in DroidCam. Now you're gonna see a few different options here. So this is the Droid Cam. This is the version that if you wanna use it in things like Teams or Skype or you know any of uh, the Zoom or anything like that, uh, you'll wanna get this one. What we're gonna get is this OBS plugin. Now let me launch OBS on here real quick. And if we add a new source, we can see that uh, there's nothing related to Droid Cam in here. Now, just to be fair, you can just in, 
uh, install the regular Droid Cam and then come down and add a uh, video capture device, a V4L2 device, and it'll work with that. But the integration version just is much more seamless with OBS, and that's why I, I prefer to use it when I'm doing OBS stuff. So let's shut this down, and all I'm gonna do is come here, do build, and apply. So we'll accept this, and we'll just let it go. And then I'll come back when this is all installed so you don't have to sit here and wait for it. Okay, I didn't need to do that because it was pretty quick. So now we can see that this is installed. So if we go back into OBS and if we add a device now, we can see we have DroidCam OBS. Now when we select this, we can give it a name. I'm just gonna call it, you know, signify it's my Android phone and click OK. So here we can change our resolution, we can change the video format. Um, you can, with the other version of DroidCam, you can use it over Wi-Fi or a wired connection uh, for the Android devices. But for some reason with this one, I haven't been able to get it to work with the wired one. I've only been able to get it to work over Wi-Fi, which is not a problem as far as I'm concerned. Now we do need to put our IP address in here. So this is where we need to set up the phone. So let's jump over there and set that up. All right, so here we are on my Android phone. So I'm gonna go ahead and go out to the Play Store and then we're just gonna do a search for DroidCam. You can see in my list there because I've searched for it before. And this is what I was talking about. We have DroidCam, DroidCam X, and DroidCam OBS. The DroidCam and the DroidCam X are if you wanna set it up to use as a general webcam for Skype or Teams or whatever. Um, what we're focusing on is that DroidCam OBS. So let's go ahead and install that. It takes just a few seconds here. It'll be really quick. And there we go. Now we're gonna just hit open, go through the prompts here. It's gonna ask about using your video and audio. It needs uh, rights to that so it can send it back to your device. And this is all we need. We can see our IP address is 192.168.1.54 and the default port is 4747. So we are gonna come back over here. Let me put this down and we'll hide this. And then we'll put in our IP address 192.168.1.54. Port is 4747 and we're gonna activate that. So we can see that the camera, let me show you here. So this camera is now showing up in OBS as a source. So let's put that down again. Now you can see that it is pretty small. It's only 640 by 480. So if we wanna change that, we can just come in, deactivate it, and then go you know, 720p, let's say, activate it again and now we have a 720p display. Now, you know, you can change this, you can resize it, you can add filters, you can crop it, just like you would with any other source in OBS. It works just like a webcam or anything, and it actually works really, really well. I've been really happy with the setup because I was never able to find a uh, webcam that you know gave me the control that this gives me. So now if we wanna do that remote control, all we have to do is open up our browser and put in that IP address and port. So in our case, it's 192.168.1.54, and then port 4747. And there we go. There is our kind of remote control thing. And if we open it side by side here, we can go and uh, let's just switch around to the front camera. And there we can see me sitting there, switch to the back camera. And we have full control over that. Now this process is just as easy for iOS. Actually, it's even easier for iOS because there's only one application that you have to worry about. Like I said, the installation is not quite as easy on Ubuntu, but uh, it's not too difficult either. Again, let me know down below if you want me to do a video on that and I'm happy to put it together. Also, let me know if you have any other questions or any requests on videos that you want me to do. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you in the next one.